Hi, my name's Katie. Um, by popular request of the people in the Hilltop Cloud Ravelry group, here I'm going to talk you quickly through um, some suggestions about how you might want to spin some carded bats. Um, it's by no means a completely conclusive list, it's purely some suggestions you might want to try out so that next time you get a lovely bat in through the post or that you buy one to five festival, um, you've got an idea about how, about how to go about spinning it. Okay, so to start us off we're going to do um, a technique that I'm currently on my, this is my current spinning project at the moment, this is for our Hilltop Cloud Spin Along Challenge, um, and it's going to be involving how to use your bat to get a woolen style of yarn. It's not a true woolen yarn because it can't be truly woolen if you don't um, hand card the fibre and roll a row like, but what you can do is you can take small sections of your bat, roll it up just like you would if you'd used hand carders, and then you can either use it spinning a short forward draw or a long draw, whichever is your preference. So, here's our bat. Okay. Um, when you want to get bats out, they're a giant sheet of fibre like this, one big rectangle. This is quite a dense bat because I wanted to get as much on the drum card as possible. Um, normally bats that I card are a little bit lighter and fluffier than this. Um, and it's quite a huge chunk of fibre to kind of be dealing with in one go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take smaller sections of it. So this is our bat. And if I just tease off a tiny, tiny strip, literally that wide, and maybe that long, so sort of 15, 15 centimetres in length and sort of maybe an inch or so. And then what you do is you just tease it out sideways. And all of a sudden you've got something that's much lighter and fluffier and area. Then what we're going to do is we're going to roll it up just like we would of our hand carders. So here's our fibre and if we just roll it, and I normally do this on my lap, I'm hoping that's still going to be, and you can see we've now got ourselves a sausage that looks remarkably like what we'd make off the hand carders. And what you can then do spinning. So we join it on on the end. So let's make ourselves get a nice good join. It's one of the secrets to long joys, the joins between the fibre because you're then going to be pulling. And I don't do what's probably to, a traditionalist would, would regard as being a completely truly long draw style spin but it works for me and it makes a nice woolen style yarn. And as you can see, I'm not waving my arm massively far off into the distance. This is my usual spinning position in this chair. And you sort of let the draft do the work. And where you get a slightly thicker bit like that, you can just put your hands either side and just ease it out. And that helps ease even out any of the slightly thicker and thinner bits. Don't worry too much that it's not perfectly even. When you ply it and when you wash it, the unevenness is magically tends to disappear out of single spun that are spun as long draw. So it's worth not not worrying yourself too much about exactly how even things are. Okay, I've got quite a light grip on the row like as you can see. I mostly tend to just hold it with just my little finger wrapped around the row like like that, and that's plenty of a tight enough grip. One of the most things that people struggle with long draw is they have a real tight death grip. So that's technique number one for having a go at spinning bats, and that's as a woolen style yarn using a little fake rolled up roll like. Okay, technique number two, and um, this time we're moving on to fresh set of bats because I want all the rest of the purple bats that I was spinning a moment ago for um, the rest of the project I'll have in mind for it. Um, don't really want to waste, I've only got 300 grams, don't really want to waste a bit showing you some samples. Um, this is how my bats tend to either turn up through the post or at shows. Um, I tend to hard card 100 grams in one go and usually they are three bats all rolled up together to make this sort of giant, great big sort of puffy semicircle and then they just have a bit of ribbon tied around them. So when you unroll it, you've got one, two, three individual rectangles that are folded up. If you take one of those rectangles 
and you open it out. Okay. It's the same rectangle we were looking up before and you can see it's a bit lighter and a bit fluffier than the one I was spinning just. Um, so simplest way to spin it, if you've got the back like that, pull yourself off one long thin strip of fibre and you're just going to spin that using a regular short forward draw. Helps if the wheel's got its drive band on. Okay, get that joined on. And you just spin that like you would a length of top. So I'm pinching with my front hand, the twist's there, no twist this side, and that's going to produce a mostly worsted style yarn because even though we kind of say drum carders and we say shake carding with woolen and the fibres being jumbled up, when you actually look at a bat, the fibres are mostly running in one direction. It's not producing something where the fibres are joined up. And when I'm spinning it this way, I'm spinning in the direction that the fibres are lying. So this is going to produce a slightly denser style yarn. So if you're wanting to produce something that's a bit harder wearing, say you're spinning for socks or you're spinning for a bit more of a garment or you're spinning for lace where you want nice stitch definition or cables where you want nice stitch definition, this might be the way to go. So you've got a long strip of fibre off the edge of the bat, short forward draw, producing something that's closer to worsted. Okay, um, next trick. Um, just like we did with the fake row leg, this time we're going to be using a smaller section of fibre rather than a long thin strip. So we're going to take our bat and we're going to pull off a similar sized chunk. This time instead of spinning a ro rolling a row leg, we're going to spin from the fold. So if we take our length of fibre and we stick it over, I like to use my index finger, and then you just grip the two ends in the end of your hand like that. So I've got a length of fibre running over the top of that finger. And then I'm going to join on the end of my fibre onto this front edge. And this is called spinning from the fold. And you don't just have to do that with bats, you can also do this with tops. And what you can do is you can have a go at spinning using a long draw technique that way. This won't produce a yarn that's quite as fluffy as yarn spun of, of, that you've rolled up into a row lag because the fibres aren't quite so jumbled up. They're still mostly all lying in the same direction. And um, True woolen and true worsted are sort of a extreme ends of the scale. Most of the time we spin yarns that are sort of an in-between factor. If you can't do long draw, you can still spin in this sort of style using a bit of a short forward draw. And again, it's just going to put a little bit more air into your fibres when they're spinning than you would do if you were spinning a short forward draw from just a long strip of fibre that you pulled off one side of the bat. So it's just going to make a slightly more light and fluffy yarn than you would have done from the previous technique. Okay, and final one that I'm going to show you. We've got our bat, so I'm using a fresh bat this time. Um, if you don't want to have to keep stopping to pull off little chunks of fibre, this one's quite a useful technique to have a go at doing. It produces a length of fibre that's sort of similar to the just tearing off a strip from down on one side. But we're going to do a technique called Z stripping. And that's where we take the rectangle strip, rectangular strip of the fibre, the bat, and we pull down one side like we did when we were just pulling off a strip from the side. And you keep going until you get all the way very nearly to the bottom edge, but you don't break it off. Instead, you're going to turn the corner, turn the bat the other way up, and then you move a section over and you pull again all the way nearly down to the bottom until you get nearly to that bottom edge but don't quite go off the edge. Turn it upside down and carry on along the next section all the way nearly to the bottom edge. We'll do one more. This last bit's going to be a bit skinny, but it won't matter. Okay. And then all the way to that bottom edge. And what you've got now is you've got, got one continuous length of fibre. And what you can do is you can chain that just like you would 
a length of comb top. When you get to the joiny bits, just do a little bit of easing out and persuading to sort of help the fibres want to go around the corner. That's it. So I've got a big chunk of fibre there, so I'm just gently going to ease it out a little bit. So I've tried to get myself a roughly consistent thickness when I'm spinning. Again, I've reached a corner and just gently ease it out. And if you break it, it's not the end of the world. You can just overlap it and carry on chaining. So ease around the corner. So I've now got a braid of fibre but it's not comb top like the form that you dye. It's still been carded, it's still got that lovely light fluffiness of a bat, but it now takes up one, far less space, but two, you've also got sort of a bit more of a portable spinning project without having to leave piles of fluff lying about the place. So say you've got pets or children who are prone to lie down in your middle of your pile of fibre and you sort of go, get off me bat. Um, you can have that sort of sat in your lap and it's not gonna get away and they're not gonna get drawn into the, into the wheel. Um, in terms of spinning this, let me just get so that it's um, popping like that. The leaders come unwrapped through my orifice. And poke it back through. So just overlap the end. You can spin this just using your regular short forward drawer like you would on comb top. Um, so that's still going to be mostly a worsted style yarn because when you look at it, the fibres are still running along the length of it and you're just not letting the twist enter the drafting zone so it's it's more worsted than anything else it's not true worsted because it's not been combed um, you can also spin that using a bit of a long draw I actually find it harder to get this sort of fibre even in a long draw than I do actually when it's been rolled up into a row like and if you are wanting to learn long draw row likes are definitely the way to go because they provide that bit of resistance which is kind of one of the important things. It's like that sort of pulling out a piece of chewing gum sensation. Um, but it's possible. Um, you won't get a completely woolen style yarn, but you will get something that's a little bit lighter and fluffier than if you just used a regular short forward or short backwards draw. Um, there are probably lots and lots of other ways that you can go about spinning, spinning bats. Um, they're all variations on a form of those, but hopefully that's given you a few different suggestions to have a go at trying the next time you uh, decide you're going to spin a bat.